Hello and welcome to the MBS Show Reviews and Discussion Podcast. I am your host, Norman Sanzo. Joining me today is Silver Quill. My KD ratio is pi. <laughs> so, what's that? It means it's uh, never ending, you can't compute it, so stop looking up online. <laughs> yeah. Alrighty then. So, well, as you may have noticed, last week we have just me and silver, and this week is the same, just me and silver. So, in today's discussion show, we're going to talk about something different. You know, last week we talked about movies, and you know what goes well with movies? Huh? Huh? Popcorn? True, and soda, and hot dogs, and if you're at the Alamo, I heard that they do steaks. Is that true? I have not had their steaks, but they do a wicked milkshake. Ooh, that's fun. But no, it's not that. It's video games. Yay. Huzzah! The consumer of my childhood, (laughs) as I became its consumer. True. But, anywho, on this episode, we're going to talk about video games. Um, Nothing too fancy, nothing too hardcore or serious, because, well, Silver's just busy with his videos. Ain't that right, Silver? I'm trying, dang it, I'm trying! <laughs> and as for me, I'm busy dealing with Sweetie Bot with her wants and needs. Uh, she edits the show and she doesn't really let up. She's a real trooper. But anywho, on today's episode, we're just going to talk about the general gaming scene. Like what we've been playing and what we've been enjoying. And I want to try and see if Silver does pay attention to the world of gaming news. And Silver... What do you think about the Nintendo Switch? I think whoever brings a Switch to a party and plays it expecting everyone to drop what they're doing and watch him play is a tool. <laughs> uh, so the, their advertising leaves something to be desired. Oh, okay. <laughs> now, if, you're, if you bring over a group party game like Smash Brothers or Mario Party or Mortal Kombat, maybe, then it's a little more, more fun, but not, not you playing a game by yourself. I'm guessing that you haven't seen the release trailer or release whatever thing that they did recently. I know that Legend of Zelda has been announced once again. A new one. And that is not a bad thing by any stretch of the imagination. I love the Zelda franchise. That said, I am kind of eager for Star Fox to get another shot. Ah, yeah. But they kind of did for the Wii U, but that didn't really pan out too well. Maybe it's... Just a rehash of Star Fox 64, probably. Yeah, let's get a new Star Fox going. Yeah, like a proper one. But uh, let's see here. How does Zelda get kidnapped again? Well, my goodness, I'm looking at some photos now. Zelda's looking more mm, innocent. And and Link's blue, double D, double die. (laughs) Uh, In all honesty, I got no idea how what's the story for this one is. But uh, you did mention party games for the Switch, right? Um, there's a really interesting party game that they're trying to promote. It's just called One Two Switch, I think. And that there is a very interesting party game for people who enjoy the party environment. Like for me, I don't really, but I don't know, for probably you and your group, maybe? Maybe. Truth be told, my friend, <laughs> good lord, the last Nintendo game I played with friends was Mario Wii oh. on on New Year's, and we ended up throwing our, each other off cliffs more than we did defeat Bowser. <laughs> That's the fun there. This was not a team-building exercise. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, tr- true that. But still, um, retail price for the Switch is going to be about $300, and it's coming out on March 3rd of 2017. So if you're interested go ahead. Um, for me, I'm just going to have the wait and see attitude because, well, I have a Wii U and it's there collecting dust because of PC Master Race. Uh. Oh, when the PC says, V is the Master Race, <laughs> the higher, higher, that's in the gamer's face. <laughs> oh, you got that on track. Like what? You, you, were you rehearsing it or something? No, I I just remember it as an interesting bit of historical satire. <laughs> I do have a life outside of Pony, you know. Uh, true that, true that. But yeah, so talking about, you know what, let's talk about the games we played instead of the games we want to play because, well, we don't have money. We, we have money, but it's going to other places like responsibilities. 
Yeah. Well, I'm going to just throw out a guess at the Zelda Switch game. Mm -hmm. There'll be this lady named Zelda, Mm -hmm. and she'll be captured by a villain, and you play as a character not named Zelda to try and go rescue Zelda. Mm -hmm. But she gets top billing. Oh, yeah. Because, you know. Just because. That's just how it rolls. Yeah, true. <laughs> Just because. Uh, I I wonder yeah. where in the timeline this Zelda is going to be at. <laughs> Maybe an alternate world timeline. I don't know. I don't know. Silver. All of the Zelda timeline are put in strange places. Like the first Zelda is put in a situation where if Zelda failed to stop Ganon in, uh, I think Ocarina of Time, something like that. I'm not hundred percent sure. There's a whole bunch of confusing mumbo jumbo things. Oh yes, yeah, so I've read a I've read a book dedicated to this that there are three branching timelines. Oh yeah. At one point, but oh goodness, we could spend we could spend all day talking about that. Yeah, but I'm not good enough because I don't know that much. So yeah. Go back to your PCs with your high resolution <laughs> rates and low slowdowns, uh, and your and your perpetual updates of chips. Oh no, money down the drain to the PC. Yeah. But still, games that we've been playing. So last time we did this, you've been playing Destiny, right? Yes, indeedy. So how's that going for you, man? Well, I've kind of, I've actually capped out. I have reached the highest. You have a, a level that you get just by playing, and then, but your power is determined by averaging the strength of all your gear to get a light level. And the highest light level you can get right now, and probably for good, is 400. Oh. Just before leaving for Pacific PonyCon, I capped out at 400. So, basically your character's OP then? Is uh, Twilight Sparkle with all the power of the alicorns? Well, if Twilight was one alicorn in an entire country of alicorns that were all equally powerful, that'd be me. (laughs) Uh, By the game standard, if I go against the, the, the game's... AI controlled enemies, I will mow down hordes of them. Oh god. <laughs> they cannot, they cannot match me anymore. <laughs> so, were, were you min-maxing or something? Were I, was I what? Min-maxing, like, um, purposely maxing out your character. Oh yeah. Oh god. <laughs> I mean, once you learn the, once you learn how to do it, it's actually kind of easy and it helped that for Christmas they had a special event called The Awakening. Oh. Where if you participated in a racing event, you get really high end gear. Uh, there were special, uh, missions and they introduced the loot chests that you could earn keys for. So the, it used to be you had to play these hyper complex, very, uh, time investment heavy levels called raids mm-hmm. that were just absurd in the extreme and you had to be part of a, a six person party to do so. Now it's, I'm sure hardcore gamers will lament that casuals have the, access to this high-end gear, but I think it offers everyone a way to play as they want. And I'm all for that. Yeah. Um, having fun is key for any video game. <clears throat> yes, indeedy. So, uh, but then you sort of realize, well, what now? Because I don't feel like starting another character and repeating this process again. Yeah, I can understand that. The grinding is not fun to some people. Uh, grinding is, well, just just repetitive gameplay. And truthfully, I'd rather invest that time in more videos. Mm, true that, true that. So, have you tried and take down Evil Bob again? Evil Bob? Well, Evil Bob is eternal. <laughs> Evil Bob will be there forever. Let's see here. What are the, There's a player versus player multi-game uh, called Iron, Fo- no, uh, Iron Banner. That's coming out on the 17th. Uh-huh. It starts, it goes for a week. That's usually fun, if not frustrating, because then you realize everyone's still stronger than me <laughs> because they play the game better than me. But at least now the, the power levels are levels so that I don't die in three hits. <laughs> yeah, at least you give, get a chance to play. Yes, just give me a chance to fight back. That's all I ask. Yeah. And talking about 6v6 player versus player, Overwatch. That's a game I've played. As have I, but I sense that you are going PC elitist while I am on the PS4. Nah, I'm not going to go PC elitist. Well, I am playing on the PC, but Overwatch is an interesting game where all the characters are balanced out to each individual character. Like, there's no upgrade of powers or there's no upgrade to 
gear. It's the character is that way now. Play him or play her that way, and it's very refreshing that way. It's very refreshing to not have to grind to get a power, but instead you play to master your power. Oh yeah, like master the character, understand the gameplay, understand the whole situational thing. Like a map situation awareness is key in this game because I played a game where. I was mowed down because my team and myself were not aware of the situation of the map or not aware of where placements of characters are. And I had a good game where we mowed down the other teams. And this is a really refreshing game where you remember back in the days how My Little Pony spawned off to become what it is today? And what it continues to become. Mm -hmm. Overwatch is that. It came out of nowhere like a wrecking ball and grab everybody by the collar and say that we're awesome and people agree with it. Well, I'm expecting you to start singing. Came in like a wrecking ball. <laughs> I don't have the alto for it. Yeah, same here. But still, it's <gasps> but really awesome. It's fun. And the characters, they're memorable. They are. They're, they're so much fun. In fact, uh, going by that, just last week, I finally had a good game with Winston, who I consider to be a very hard character to master. Mm -hmm. But the, the fun of his character, he is a hyper-intelligent gorilla who built a chrono accelerator, but also a Tesla coil gun. True that. Terrible short range and impossible to aim. But I finally found a way for him to be useful to the team, and it fit the situation. And there's a great satisfaction that comes with that. Yeah, like finding the right character that you can control and play is very refreshing and very rewarding. Like, example for me, I've been playing a lot of Farah on my earlier games. And Farah is one of those characters where she's built like a tank, but Soldier 76 could gun her down easily if you're not paying attention. And yeah, the way that this game works is like rock, paper, scissors. Um, certain characters are more vulnerable to others and certain characters work well with others like if you play Zarya and you have her graviton bomb or graviton black hole thingy that pulls in characters in a certain location you could combo her off with Tracer with her bombs or Diva with her mech tank and you could even combo off Anna with Soldier with her biotic boost with Soldier's uh, what you gonna call this um, sight? Med bomb? No, no. Um, soldier oh. sight where he um, has the what you gonna call this auto um, auto aim thing? Oh yes, the aimbot. <laughs> yeah, the aimbot. Finally, an aimbot where it's meant to be that way. <laughs> it's fun all around. I, it, it is fun to see how you can combo and party up. Although. I played with randoms, which, oh, that can end, end so badly. This one kid, I don't know what it is, but somehow at both my panel presentations and on video games, kids with, with potato chips just make a mess of things. <laughs> yeah. Like... Kid was just, was just munching down with his mic on and it was like, you couldn't mute yourself for that? Yeah, I don't know. Well, you could mute the player, right? On PS4? You can, but you have to go through like three sub menus. It's a very, and if you're doing that in the middle of a game, you're suddenly not playing with your team. It's very frustrating. Mm, yeah. Like any multiplayer game, you're going to have one of those days where you're going to get good players and you're going to get bad players. And well, <laughs> a team that doesn't communicate is not a fun team at all. But to say that um, we don't enjoy the game, uh, I don't see, I won't say so because the joy of the game is when you win after having 10 games of loss and having that one win. It's very gratifying. Plus, during the holiday season, they had May's Snowball Challenge, oh, yeah. which was a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah, that, that was fun. Although I realize May is a psychotic. Why? Because you, you hear her dialogue, I'm coming for you. <laughs> Where are you? Oh. I put a rock in this one. <laughs> really? She said that? 
She says that. She's she's gathering snow to make a snowball. I'm going to put a rock in this one. Hey, great. You're going to take out someone's eye. <laughs> really? She, I didn't hear that one. Oh, it's there. I'm sure someone put it, the YouTube quotes up on. But I just like, woman, you are horrible. <laughs> horrible, horrible, horrible. Oh, <laughs> uh, but wow. No comment on that one. So, I just, ah, ah. <laughs> so oh, well, what made you buy it, oh, Silver? A friend from high school, he's the one who got me playing Destiny so we could sort of reconnect over a game night. Mm-hmm. Uh, but then, you know, Destiny can only go so far. So Overwatch the, was the big thing. So that was my Christmas gift to him last year. Mm-hmm. And he's, he's dug into it wholeheartedly. He's already at like level 25. I'm only at 18. So wait, 25, prestige 25 or just 25? I'm going to say just 25. Enough that he can play in the major leagues if he wanted. Oh, all right. He probably, probably gets schooled, but you know, yeah. that's life. True, true. I mean, you guys have a job, so yeah. I find it so funny. The guys who uh, I've seen videos of MLG players who, mm-hmm. who, at least for a brief period in their lives, get to be paid to play the video games, and everything I ever see them do is, well, yeah, we camp at this choke point and we kill anyone who comes through. <laughs> it's like that's not really. We discourage that in the game. Why are you being a professional gamer by breaking that? It's, how do I put this? With Overwatch, it kind of is the game. Uh, if you remember the map, Eichenwald, um, it's a German map. So there's one point where, okay, if your team is attacking, there's this, um, bridge where if you, if your opponent has Symmetra, they're gonna set lasers around that thing, like, Dang annoying, but if you're playing a Symmetra, it's fun. <laughs> but yeah, um, there's the choke point there. You put a Reinhardt there, you put um, some few Symmetra turrets, and you just get Soldier on top. It'll be a fun day for the defending party just to mow the um, attacking party down. But if you got a good team who knows what they're doing, yeah, um, I'll just disrupt and stuff. Like It's easy to kind of mess around with people. Or you could just get a junk rat and just lob grenades ad nauseum. True, true. Oh, so here's a question since mm-hmm. we're talking about ge- German. Mm-hmm. Who's your favorite character and who's the character you've played the most? Uh, okay, um, when it comes to characters that I've played the most in uh, Quick Match, oh, was it Quick Play? I think Quick Play. Um, I noticed that I'm clocking in Farah at almost nine hours plus or so on. I don't really remember. But I don't know. Um, I've been switching around characters, but for characters that I like, I have to say Diva. Because Diva has this thing where she has infinite ammo with her turrets. Not that strong and she doesn't walk that fast. But with her shields up, she really does a lot of damage or does, does a lot of disruptive things. And as for characters I do like, Mercy. Mercy as a character is really cool. What about you, Silva? Well, I've played Reaper the most at a grand total of 45 minutes. Uh, and I, uh, he's a tank buster. He, he basically, I, I just find it hilarious. He's just walking after someone lobbing shotgun after shotgun. <laughs> oh, I'm out of ammo. Drop it like it's hot. Pick up a new set of guns. Yeah, yeah. Plus, he's so, he's so, I don't got face. Death has come. <laughs> and, I am death. Uh, so die, die, die. Yes, I'm playing Linkin Park. Why do you ask? <laughs> Uh, so basically, he's an edge lord. Sure seems that way. <laughs> but my favorite, my favorite character, and this is where the Germanness comes in, Reinhardt. Oh, uh, yay, Ryan! Ryan's cool. Oh, the, shielding all his players, football tackling the opponents, standing up for honor and valor. And I, I will say this: I have not, so I have not succumbed to microtransactions. Oh, really? No. But if I can somehow earn his Stoneheart uh, skin, 
which is just based on World of Warcraft, as nice as I can tell, but it looks flipping amazing. Is that the one where he has the black armor with the mouth in the middle? Oh, no, that's... uh. I think that's Hellmouth. Mm. That looks cool too. Slightly Gurren Lagan inspired. Yeah, I have eyes. the rate one. <laughs> that that looks awesome. That would be my second choice. But Reinhardt's got like the coolest armor in and oh, look yeah. in the whole darn game. <laughs> um, and talking about microtransaction, right? I have succumbed to it. <laughs> uh, oh, don't feel bad. Every everyone has at some point. I mean, it, it does create this have and have not mentality, mm, and true. people want to overcome that. Yeah, and in all honesty, when I succumb to it, it's only for certain situations, like "quote unquote" holiday seasons. Like, um, I bought one for Halloween, and I also bought one for um, Christmas. So the need to get "quote unquote." Um, exclusive items during the season is strong with that one because you, you if you want to get um, for example if you want to get Farah's um, not even Farah's um, let's just say my Christmas costume you have to wait another year for it to be available for you to get it so if you mean my you could either purchase it with coins in-game coins or you could just try your luck on getting a loot box and talking about loot boxes with the recent update they have with arcade mode, you have, um, well, I think about a week to get three loot boxes, but that's only if you manage to win nine games in arcade mode. That might be beyond my ability. Arcade mode is really geared to people who know the characters inside and out. Because uh, often it, can, it controls whom you get to play. Oh, it depends really, because um, with arcade mode, it depends on the mode. If you're playing three-on-three -three elimination... It's, well, three on three elimination. Um, if you can party out with your group, you can have a really fun game. Um, communicating, telling people where and what, um, things are going on. Or if you could play, um, let's see, uh, well, like you mentioned, the six v six random, like, uh, you don't get to pick your hero. The game decides what you pick. And, well, that's the fun there. Like, trying out new characters and seeing how it goes. Or you could go for 6v6 free-for-all. Meaning you could have the full diva tank meta and just mow everybody down. I tried that. It was dumb. It was stupidly fun, but dumb. Oh, what was the game mode I played? You could either be Roadhog or Lucio. Um. So, so everyone's throwing chains everywhere. There's Roadhogs. Lucios are just blasting people left and right <laughs> uh. out of a control zone. And you just think, okay, this is awesome, but what is going on? Uh, I think that's a free for all, um, depending on the map. But yeah, I think that one is one of the, uh, I forgot what they call, it's a map type where, uh, certain special events like, uh, Junkenstein Revenge was there, um, probably My Snowball will be in there too, and Lucio Ball, like for the, um, summer games, Lucio Ball was in that one there. It's pretty cool. I mean, it's funny the way we say it. It almost sounds like Lucille Ball. <laughs> yeah. I love Lucy. Da, 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 da. <laughs> well, still. But, you know, honestly, Overwatch has been one of those games where I personally have enjoyed it. And I find that playing it with friends and on mic really helps a lot. And looking on YouTube for tips and tricks or just general stories or updates to the game is really interesting like like I mentioned before this has grown or this has grown to be the quote unquote new fandom in our media or what's what I'm looking for um in our entertainment it's the big one yeah it's like it's there like out of nowhere 2016 came Overwatch came out during October something and there it is like Overwatch is best game. People should play it. People should play it. Um, for me, I won't say that it's the best game of 2016. It's a good game of 2016, but not one of the best. Some other games do better job, but still, Overwatch is fun. Overwatch is fun. And it gets an adrenaline rush going. I, I honestly feel, after I've played, I sort of need to come down from the adrenaline. It's like, oh, that was intensive. 
And I agree that if if you're having a bad night, you can still laugh about how bad it is if you're with friends. That takes a lot of the the sting out of it. The because I get competitive, mm-hmm. but when if if I'm playing with a friend and we just have a good laugh at how bad things are going, it doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah, I, I've been that way too. What what really grinds my gear is if I have a team or I'm playing with people who don't know what they're doing and that really grinds my gears and that really gets me angry and in all honesty I don't like that about well I don't like to be angry because who likes to be angry so I do notice that but still it's one of those things where huh this is the competitive side of me I don't like it but I need to kind of control and be better knowing your one's flaw and trying to overcome it yes that is all we can ever do mm-hmm so that's Overwatch. Like, would we say go buy it? Yeah, totally. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hop to it. Uh, microtransactions are perhaps the most leg- they're the most legitimate criticism I I see. People sometimes just like Overwatch for character A or B, which comes down to personal preference. But it depends on how far you're willing to go with microtransactions. It's not a pay to win, but it definitely encourages that you take an investment. Oh, yeah. Um, the microtransaction in this one is all cosmetics. Like, seriously, it's all cosmetics. Like, the only big thing that you really, really want is skin for your favorite character. Like, if you play Reinhardt, like Silver Sis, he wants the, um, what, uh, Lionheart skin, was it? Uh, Stoneheart. Yeah, Stoneheart. And for me, I wanted uh, Mercy's which costume so i paid a bit to get them <laughs> you don't have to be embarrassed there's no judgment here only understanding yeah true so yeah it's all about the skins in overwatch there's no pay to win trust me if there's a pay to win method of the game it would have been pan for that thing yes oh what was it deus ex the new one Ooh. that that caught some flack for pay to win oh, really no now, but I'm not well versed in games right now because truthfully, the only other game I play besides Destiny and Overwatch is Broforce. Ooh, I've heard a lot of good things about the Broforce. Oh, it's it's cheesy in the extreme. It is both a parody and a celebration of the '80s action heroes, which I've been learning more about that as well. <laughs> uh, and if I do remember right, like Broforce is a 2D side scroller. Shoot them up, um, in the same vein as Contra. I'd call it more an explosion simulator because you fire one bullet and suddenly half the screen is engulfed in explosions. You just got to make sure you're standing far enough away. Oh, if I do remember right, there's um, Rambo, um, Arnold Schwarzenegger's character in Predator, Neo from The Matrix, and if I do remember right, Chuck Norris, right? Well, they, they, they add a bro to everything, so it's the bro doc saints. <laughs> I guess it'd be bri- let's, let's get a, let me pull up a list of the bro force characters. And in more recent versions, they've introduced the, the hardcore female, uh, bro team members, which I'm glad. Ripley from Aliens, let's see. Let's see, we've got Ram Bro, <laughs> Bro Mando, <laughs> BA Boracious, Oh, here we go. Brodell Walker. <laughs> Brohard from Die Hard. Mac Brover from MacGyver. Hello. Blade from... Blade didn't translate very well. It became Braid. <laughs> but then there's Bro Dread. Bro in black. Snake Bro Skin. <laughs> oh, wow. Robocop. <laughs> Let's see. Let's get a little further down the list. Bro Lee, Tank Bro from Tank Girl. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's see here. Broden. Huh. I haven't gotten Broden yet. He's Raiden from Mortal Kombat. Ooh. <laughs> That'll be awesome. The Broketeer. Let's see here. Where, what's Ellen Ripley? Ellen Ripbro. <laughs> And it, it's just absurd. You are just going through levels and killing every single enemy in glorious fashion. And of course, it's it's so cornily pro America <laughs> yeah. that it, it 
it's more satirizing than uh, glamorizing. Yeah. Oh, and you even can be the predator or the brodator. <laughs> okay. Uh... Is, is there is there no alien? No Braillean? Nope. <laughs> Oh wow! But still, wow. Uh, but I, I've seen Let's Play of Pro Force, and it's on my Steam wish list. And yeah, it's one of those things where, oh my god, this is so awesome! Just because of eighties reference, like Bromando or uh, Rambo. <laughs> so it is. It is just fun all around. Yeah, and well, as for me, for another game that I've been playing. Um, a lot is PD2. So PD2, what can I say? It's um how how do I put this in the simplest of terms? Um you play as a thief who robs banks or you play as a beggar who robs banks and well cause mayhem in the most simplest way to describe it. But it's really a team based game where you play with your friends to well earn a lot of cash and not get beaten up by cops. Sounds good to me. Not getting beat up is always a good goal. Yeah, and the game itself is fun. People who are in the gaming news knows about the DLC that they have where it's kind of quote-unquote almost pay to win and stuff. And yeah, I can see that annoying some people, but in all honesty, the game has evolved for almost like, what, um, four years now. When it came out in 2013 and... It evolves so much that it's not even the same game now with um, constant updates and patches and um, game changes. Like the developers, Overkill Studio, uh, really paid a lot of attention to the game and listened to what the fans want. They even had Ron Perlman as a playable character. Very nice. He voices the character too. He plays as a rugged biker guy. And... ah. It's just so much fun. I would recommend playing the game on PC because it has a lot of support and also you're able to mod the game. Uh, the game by default is a bit hard. You don't get a lot of counters for, well, tracking for how many pages you have answered or how many bad guys are on the map and so on. So, um, playing with a few mods make things a bit easier, but not too easy. In all technicality, you could do whatever you want. If you you can make the game stupid easy, or you can make the game stupid hard for yourself. It's a fun game to play with friends. So, Silver, you got anything to add on? Oh, sadly, no. I've been I've been somewhat negligent on games. I could talk about my friends who play every game under the sun. Uh, hardcore completionist, mm-hmm. but oh god. Uh, he played, he was playing Tomb Raider, one of the bonus levels that features zombies. Ooh, interesting. And, well, it was actually very unpleasant because he started, it started getting harder and harder and harder and he was just going insane <laughs> and getting very hostile. And you're watching him playing online or on couch? On couch. Oh, so you get to see his face go red now. Yes, very much so. Oh, wow. So I felt, uh, it's like, you know, th- I, I've been like this. I've gotten so frustrated at a game and just wanting it to just go away. <laughs> but the, that is just, that's not who I want to be, especially when my friends are in the room with me. Oh, yeah. Understandable, because you you don't want to show your negative side to your friends. Or anybody at all. Yes. I mean, it's there. I'm competitive. I get angry. I would destroy you all. <laughs> but but it's a part that I don't want to define my character. Mm, true. And basically, it's just a game. Just have fun. You're not getting paid for this. Unless you're a MLG player who's getting paid for this, then yeah... But still, you don't want to show your negative side. You want to be as professional as possible. Exactly. And in truth, I don't want to be an MLG. I respect that there are people who have that skill, but it's not something I want to devote the time to develop. I play games to fun and just turn off for a little bit. Mm-hmm. I understand that. If, if suddenly my career was based on winning a game, I think it wouldn't be fun anymore. 
how do I put this? It's one of those things where, okay, for example, it's us doing the reviews, except that instead of, how do I put this? Just, just imagine us doing the reviews day in and day out and getting paid for it. And well, are we having fun? Well, kind of. You can. Yeah, you can, but it's considered a job. It's like, um, like this, the two reviewers, Ilbert and who now? Um, Siskel and Ebert? Yes, yeah, Siskel and Ebert. Those two. Um, they don't, they, they're not friends. They're just co-workers. But when they go on screen, they act like friends. They're buddy buddies. Like, what? Well, even then they might just be, Oh, how to describe it? They, they could be hostile or confrontational on the, on the, uh, show as well. Mm-hmm. I mean, they really laid into one another at times. <laughs> yeah, but that's, that's entertaining. But in the end, it's just a job. After they clock out, it's just like, all right, see you later, but so on. Mark Shields and David Brooks, uh, do political analysis. Every Friday they get together on the, uh, on the news hour and they are, Cordial, intelligent, very enjoyable all around. But I don't know how they are off screen if they, if they even hang out afterwards. With doing something like gaming for a career, you know what? It's almost a thing where, uh, for example, I'm playing Overwatch because it's my job. But I play some other CD games for fun. It's like Broforce. Yay. Yay, Broforce. Blow it up. Blow it <laughs> yep. up. Uh, but anyway, um, I think we've reached our end for what more games we've played because I could say a bit more like Street Fighter V and I can talk about a lot of stuff, but you know what? I'm not going to bore you guys with that. So I'm just going to end it here because who knows? Uh, maybe in probably three more months or longer or well six, we'll be talking about more games that we played. Who knows, right? So anyway, um, I'm going to end it here and say that if you enjoy us talking about, well, this topic in general or any others, please do, well, check out the MBS Show's Patreon page because, well, we do stuff there. And also, I'm guessing, Silver, you have a Patreon page also? I do. It helps It helps support my reviews and make sure that uh, I can still deliver quality and royalty-free music so I can avoid YouTube as best I can. Uh, yeah, that They're is claim true. bots. Yeah, that is true, too. So yeah, anyway, um, do check us out on the Patreons. But if not, you can always check us on the YouTubes. That helps too. So anyway, I have been Norman Sanzo. I am Cecil Vaquil. And we'll guys catch you on another episode of the NBS show. Maybe with more video games, more movies, or maybe more back to ponies. Ponies are fun, right? Ponies are very fun. So anyway, I'll catch you guys next time. See ya. Adios. So, Silver, what about we go play some Overwatch? I heard that's a fun game. Yeah, well, first I've got it. I'm gonna go watch Arrival with my friend. Alright, you then. Know.